Peace be with you. This is the homily for the 30th Sunday in the ordinary time year C. I'm going to focus mostly on the gospel passage Luke chapter 18 verse 9 to 14, the famous parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector who went to pray. So of course it's about prayer, but I'm going to reveal you in this homily the weakness of God. God really has a weakness. So let's see what is that. But before that, today's gospel passage is about prayer. But if you see carefully, for the past two Sundays also, we were focusing on prayer. Uh, two Sundays ago, we had the uh, healing of the ten lepers. Only one guy who came to thank. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus expected this, this Thanksgiving. And I explained to you that Thanksgiving is the Eucharist. So it was about Eucharist. And Eucharist is a prayer supreme form of prayer so the last sunday is about the parable of the widow and the unjust judge and the theme was persistent prayer so if if eucharist is the greatest prayer then we should not give up on this great prayer we have to persistently go in spite of the problems and the struggles or the scandals that we face in and this sunday is also about prayer but mostly about the internal posture that we need to have. So we have a lot of things to learn from uh, this tax collector. First of all, let me give a background to this parable. The devout observed, that is a Jew, observed three prayer times daily. 9 a.m., 12, midday and 3 p.m. Prayer was held to be especially efficacious if it was offered in the temple. Of course, you can pray anywhere you want, but it is considered efficacious if you pray in the temple. And so at these hours, many went up to the temple courts to pray. And remember, when the apostles were praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit, they also went to the temple because they also believed that prayer is efficacious when you pray in the temple. So the second point is the Jewish law prescribed only one absolutely obligatory fast. Uh, that on the day of atonement. So your uh, the Jew was asked to fast only on one day in the entire year. But those who wished to gain special merit fasted also on Mondays and Thursdays. It is noteworthy that these were the market days when Jerusalem was full of country people. Those who fasted whitened their faces and appeared in disheveled clothes. And those days gave their uh, piety the biggest possible audience. So people were so proud to be pious because they were seen by others, especially those people who come for the marketplaces. The Levites were to receive a tithe of all the man's produce according to Numbers 18.21, Deuteronomy 14.22. But this Pharisee in the parable tithed everything, even things which... There was no obligation to tithe, meaning he didn't have any attachment to money. His problem was something else. Let's focus on that. So the real price of Pharisee, you know, we see the prayer of the Pharisee in the parable. And there are really some recorded uh, prayers of Pharisee. I will read out to you. It's really interesting. Uh, cited by uh, William Barclay. So there is a recorded prayer of certain rabbi, which runs like this. I thank thee, O Lord my God, that thou hast put my part with those who sit in the academy, and not with those who sit at the street corners. For I rise early, and they rise early. I rise early to the words of the law, and they to vain things. I labor, and they labor. I labor, and receive a reward, and they labor, and receive no reward. I run, and they run. I run to life of the world to come, but they to the pit of destruction. <laughs> This is really a prayer of a rabbi. So it is on record that Rabbi Simeon uh, ben Jokai once said, If there are only two righteous men in the world, I and my son, or these two. If there is only one, I am he. So when Jesus recorded the prayer of Pharisee in the parable, he's not exaggerating. Let me help you to understand the role of a Pharisee and the tax collector and their prayers. Okay, first of all, they are in the location. What is the location? Temple. They all went to the temple to pray. And he took his position in the temple, whereas the tax collector was off a distance, stood off at a distance. Maybe he was at the entrance, but they were in the temple. That says something very interesting. When Jesus talked about prayer, uh, maybe he's also telling us that when you really want to pray, 
pray wherever you want, but it's better if you go to the church. Um, one. Number two, social status. Believe me, the Pharisee during the time of Jesus was a celebrity. He was famous. Everybody respected these guys. They were like Hollywood actors and actresses now. They were very famous and they had great influence on the people. Whereas a tax collector was an infamous guy. He was totally infamous. If somebody looks at him, they spit at him and then go. That was the social status at the time of the tax collector. But if you see, Jesus turns upside down that who is a real celebrity is a tax collector because he was humble. Not the Pharisee who was self-righteous. So uh, that's a social uh, status. So when we now we have a different idea about Pharisees, but not during the do days of Jesus, they were celebrity. They were very famous. Look at the postures. He took up his position. He was standing erect, very proud. Uh, let's see the posture of the tax collector. Standing far off, he would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast. You know, not looking at the heaven is because of his guilt. He knew that he committed big sin, and he has been committing. And he really felt guilty. And he beat his breast because that's a sign of grief. Remember in the Catholic Church when we participate in the Mass, and the first thing that we do is seeking God's mercy. And then we say, I confess to Almighty God. And we also beat our breast in order to really acknowledge, Lord, we have committed sin. And we feel sorry for that. Please forgive us. That is a sign. In fact, we do that in remembrance of this parable of uh, the Pharisee and the tax collector. So it has got a lasting effect in the Eucharistic liturgy. He acknowledged who God is and the distance between him and God. He knew there is a big distance between him and God. And he accepted responsibility for his own failings. He didn't put blame on anyone. He acknowledged that he has committed sin and he wanted to change. It is not that after that he won't continue to live like that. But he also takes a decision. That is why he feels sorry and then beats that he's a sinful person. And the third one is prayer. Look at the prayer of the Pharisee. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity. Greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my own income. Um, if you see the word, uh, the, the word they use for prayer here is uh, pros heiton, which means prays to himself. The Pharisee, though he was in the temple, he did not pray to God. He actually praying to himself. That is what the word uh, says. He was praying to himself. Whereas the tax collector, he said, Oh God, he acknowledged the presence of God and then be merciful to me a sinner. This is very important because the Pharisee, his understanding about God as a discriminatory God, a disc God who discriminates. But his view of God, tax collector's view of God, is God is merciful. For Pharisee, God is not merciful. But tax collector, God is merciful. He saw God who is filled with mercy. So he received mercy. He did not see in that way. So he didn't receive mercy from God. The result of prayer. He was confident, Pharisee, in his religiosity. The Pharisee asked God for nothing. And thus received nothing. You go to the church, he didn't ask for anything. So he didn't receive anything. Many people nowadays, we do. We go to church, we don't receive anything. Why? Because we don't ask for anything. Whereas the tax collector asked for mercy and he received mercy. That is why Jesus says he was justified. Let's see the commonality between these two, uh, Pharisee and tax collectors. Both are Israelis, same country. They belong to the same religion, Jewish religion. And they belong to the same temple. And both were active believers. They were, it's like active Catholics, yes. But one saw God as merciful. Another one did not see. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Article 2613 and 2631, actually quotes this particular parable that Jesus narrated in this, this Sunday and then talks about two important things. Number one is the humility of heart. The third parable, the Pharisee and the tax collector, concerns the humility 
of the heart. Humility is very important when you pray. That's why the church continues to make this prayer its own, Kyrie Eliason. We acknowledge that we are sinful. That's why every Eucharistic Mass, Eucharistic celebration begins with uh, seeking God's mercy and forgiveness. And Article 2631 says, the first movement of the prayer of petition is asking forgiveness. That is what we see in the parable, seeking God's forgiveness. Why? Because he is merciful. He will definitely forgive you if you ask forgiveness. So we cannot come to a conclusion and say, oh, there is no sin that God, uh, no, that, that God will never forgive my sins. No, God is always merciful. If you really, truly feel sorry for your sins, God will forgive your sins. It is not enough, therefore, to ask ourselves how much we pray. We also have to ask how we pray with, a, with, with seeking forgiveness, acknowledging our sins with a humble heart. You know, we do not go to Mass and to tell God how great we are. No, we go to Mass to acknowledge that how sinful we are. You know, the word humble or humility and human both has the same root, humus. Not like the hummus that we eat, but humus in Latin, which means soil. This actually comes from the Bible, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. When the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. In Hebrew, there is a wordplay between the words for man and the ground. This type of wordplay is very common in the original languages of sacred scripture, but which is lost in translations. God formed the first man in Hebrew, which means Adam. Man means Adam. From the ground in Hebrew, Adama. So, man means soil, is from the ground. The collective noun, man, in Hebrew will become the proper name of the first man, Adam. So his name reflects his origin. Uh, before the humble heart, I told you the weakness of God. What is the weakness of God? The weakness of God is this. Before a humble heart, God opens his heart completely. The first reading we heard today, Sirach 35 or 16, we read, He who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal. So the weakness of God is man's true humility. It is this humility which the Virgin Mary expresses in her canticle, the Magnificat. He has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. His mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. So... We are God's children, my brothers and sisters. It is true and necessary to believe, but we also have to admit that we are children who have not achieved what the Father wants from us. As a publican says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. There is a huge distance between what God wants for me and who I really am. But let us repeat three times on this beautiful prayer that Jesus gave this in the parable, God, me, be merciful to me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen.